With more time together, it's even more important that families get on. Whether this is spouses, husbands and wives, siblings, brothers and sisters, or the relationship between the generations, parents and children, grandparents and grandchildren perhaps, whatever circumstances you find yourself in, it's incredibly important, far more than usual in these circumstances, that we all tolerate one another and small frustrations, irritations don't lead to arguments, to unnecessary uh, disagreements, quarrels. In fact, this should be an opportunity during the lockdown for us to learn to get on better as families. And I'm sure that's the case in many situations, many families. My concern is for those where things are moving in the other direction. We hear different types of reports. So let us use this as an opportunity to improve our relations and relationships. And let us be patient. Let us be more tolerant. And I want to focus particularly today on children. And my message is for the parents of those children. If you have children in your house, you're looking after them. And of course, this can be sort of broken up into different groups. We have those with very small children, babies, toddlers, those who have children of primary school age, those who have children who are teenagers of secondary school age. So for each group, there are separate challenges. Uh, children who are very small will, will not easily understand the reasons why they can't go out, they can't go to the park, perhaps they can't go shopping as they normally did. They can't go to school, they can't meet their friends. So they might be testing their parents in ways that parents are not used to. Parents who are used to a busy lifestyle of their own in which they only spend a limited amount of time with their children, children being at school, at nursery for most of the day, being looked after by somebody else. Now, in these circumstances, we must learn to humble ourselves and respond to their nature. One of the beauties of the khuluq of Rasulullah is that he would, he would respond to a person, interact with a person based on their human need. The grandchildren are climbing on top of the Prophet while he's in salah. And he's patiently enduring that. He's waiting, he's prolonging his sajda. The Prophet is holding one of the grandchildren, Hassan al Hussein, and the child urinates on top of Rasulullah. The Prophet does not put him down in an, in, uh, in an instant and express anger. He patiently holds him, and there's wisdom there too, otherwise it would have spread further. And then he simply sends for some water, the Prophet and he just washes. And that's all, it's over. So this is for those macho men who don't like holding children with nappies on, but the child might leak. There's a lesson for us here. Similarly, children who wake up in the night. So let us understand, mums and dads, that we need to be patient. And these precious gifts, these children that Allah has given us are an amana. And we must use these moments in a wise way. And let us also understand that what children observe, they learn from that. And we mustn't assume that because children are mute when they're very small, they don't talk. Although, uh, if you look at the experts research on this the linguists look at this and they talk about the early stages when the children express themselves in a single sound a single syllable that syllable has different intonations is it a high pitched sound or a low pitched sound and it actually has the meaning of a full phrase and children begin to understand words far sooner than they begin to speak them and that's why when they do begin to speak often comes out as a stream. They say lots of things together and they can make complicated grammatical structures. We don't appreciate this. This is the time to see this qudra of Allah. وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ As Allah mentions in the Quran, the variation in your skin colors, your skin tones, and your tongue, your accent, your language. So children, we can observe how عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ In Surah Al-Rahman, Allah Ta'ala mentions how He taught the human being to speak. We can observe this in our children. We can see Allah, Allah's signs through our children. So let us use these opportunities to engage with these children. And let us not be of the sort that complains. Let us take these, let us not be frustrated. Frustrated. Let us take these as an opportunity. 
these these days to spend more time with the children, watch them grow, and interact with them. And as I say, Rasulullah's modesty and humbleness, he would talk to children at their level. There was a little boy called Abu Umair, and he had a pet bird, and uh, Nuhair, and the pet bird died. And Abu Umair was looking very sad, and Rasulullah spotted him looking very sad, and he stopped for him, and he said, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'al al-Nuhair? Oh Abu Umair, what happened to your little bird, Nuhair? So he said this to cheer the child up. He cheered the child up by interacting with him. This is coming down to the level of the child. An old lady would stop Rasulullah on the street. He would stop and listen to her concerns. He would come home, Aisha radiallahu anha, still small, still young, and she's playing with her playmates and she has some dolls. The Prophet moves aside so she can carry on her play with her playmates. And she has her rag doll, her rag dolls. And Rasulullah asks her, what are they? She says, they are the, the girls, Albanat. So he allows her to play, even though she's growing up. And, you know, uh, in, in many contexts, such a young girl might be expected to act like a grown-up. The Prophet ﷺ does not expect her to do that. So we need to learn to live with whoever, we, you know, we, we bow down and anzilun nasa manazulam, respond to people based on their need, not just our own need, or not on our own need at all. Just give that up for the moment. And this might mean that you we spend time doing arts and crafts, painting, getting our hands dirty, playing silly games and just laughing. It might be sketching. It might be uh, an opportunity to do some baking together uh, and uh, then cleaning up afterwards as well. Um, and, and so on, doing housework together, um, making things with our hands. If you have a garden, doing some gardening. It may be an opportunity to engage with some number games, uh, some word games, some poetry. Um, some writing, creative writing, some building something, building something with, with card and paper. Um, it could be a variety of any of these things. And of course, there's the actual syllabus, what children are missing at school. And it's nice to see huge amount of, amounts of resources available online. Schools are providing support. Teachers are getting in contact with students. So we ought to engage as well. And so my specific point here is that parents of children should see this as a golden opportunity to be a proper family person and not be frustrated, not be irritated, not tell the children off because they are frustrated because they've been locked indoors and they can't go out uh, and they can't take a lot of fresh air. Rather, let us use in, in creative ways and, 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 and find ingenious ways of, 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 of entertaining the children, of engaging with them, nor should they be allowed to spend hours at a time on tablets and in front of screens, which isn't the best for their health and for their development. Only an element of that is appropriate. There ought to be a balance. So timetabling is the key. And so to finish, uh, our elders, our mashayikh would say that if you want your, if you want barakah in your time, then follow a timetable. Allocate a time for everything. Make a list of all the things you want to do and then fix a time for them. May Allah grant us tawfiq. And once again, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant shifa to all of those who are ill, protect those who are working in the front lines, and in the, the food sector, in the health sector, and protect you all. And uh, those who aren't ill, may Allah Azza wa Jal keep you well till the end. May Allah Ta'ala forgive those who've, been, who've passed away in this illness or passed away from some, some, from some other, any other cause. And may Allah Ta'ala grant solace and sukoon and tranquility and peace of heart and mind to those who have been uh, bereft of some near or dear one in these days and in these weeks. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillah.